Hi everyone, my name is Joseph. So I wanted to discuss an episode from Star Trek The Next Generation, specifically from episode one, uh, I'm, <laughs> excuse me, not episode one, season one, episode 17. Uh, I have the name of the title right here, um, Where the Bow Breaks. So before I get into it, I just want to state that these are thoughts not stemming just from Star Trek The Next Generation, this specific episode. These are just thoughts that I've been circling around my head for a while just from engaging with uh, discussions with my friends, family, um, co-workers, and, uh, and um, social conversation as well. When I say social conversation, I mean like conversation on social media. I may not be partaking in it, but I am reading those comments and everything like that, right? And um, before I talk about the episode itself, the reason what prompted me to discuss this topic in the first place was just this idea that seems to be really prevalent in our uh, in today's time is that I find it interesting that we really, we being society does its best to really put a hierarchy when it comes to the humanities versus uh, STEM or humanities uh, and STEM. And um, what I mean by that is just if you were to ask a random individual, I feel like they'll more than likely would say negative things about humanities, be it philosophy, sociology, English uh, versus the STEM field where there'll be a lot more positive um perspectives or opinions and um the reason why i just think it's a little bit problematic is just because i don't think that there needs to be this idea that one is better than the other what i like to believe more is that one can exist without the other and what i mean by that is if one did not have the imagination to create then those creations would not be made in the first place all right so the imagination is being the humanities and the creation being the STEM field. Um, and so how does this tie into Star Trek The Next Generation? I, sh I need to stop saying that because that's the whole show. Because right off the bat, I just want to say, uh, this is my first time watching Star Trek The Next Generation. Watching anything Star Trek that's not from J.J. Uh, Abrams. And I have to say, I am really enjoying it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, I might be 17 episodes in. Probably half of those episodes are a little bit silly. If one has seen Doctor Who, then they're probably used to that kind of campiness. Uh, but the other half of those episodes, man, they really give the audience a lot to think about, uh, a lot to discuss if one is able to discuss it with another individual. And it's just been a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of, I, I've noticed a lot of the uh, philosophical elements within uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. And I've just really been appreciating it. But with that being said, when it came to this episode, it did disappoint me a bit. It begins with uh, setting up with children uh, not wanting to do uh, math. And then the Enterprise ends up discovering this planet, a mythical planet called Audia, where it's stated that this planet is very much pro-humanities. Um, they focus on the arts. And it gets revealed, if anyone's a Warhammer fan, <laughs> uh, the custodian really did remind me of STCs from Warhammer. I forget what they stand for. But also in the same way that in the Warhammer universe, how there's no more scientists. Or rather, even if scientists do exist, they're no longer researching to progress. They just didn't think stagnate because they don't want to understand how things operate. That same idea is occurring in this episode. And this planet, they don't have any babies because as it turns out, the technology they used to, de to defend themselves, to hide themselves from marauders, was also a double-edged sword. While it did cloak the planet and made them, made them difficult to discover, it also reduced the... Um, the um, I was going to say the echoplasm, not the echoplasm, excuse, excuse me, the, uh, the ozone layer. <laughs> Lots of judgment. The ozone layer, it reduced the ozone layer and that was, it was causing radiation poisoning, not poisoning, but radiation um, issues with the population biologically and thus the Aldonians or the individuals from Aldia, they weren't able to reproduce or procreate. So they actually kidnapped some children from the Enterprise. And the episode essentially ends with, to, just to really break this down to... Um, simple terms. Essentially, Audia represents the humanities, while it's the Enterprise represents the STEM field. And at the end, essentially, the conclusion is humanities by itself is just going to destroy itself. Audia, while it's with STEM by itself, it's going to be a okay. It could still operate the Enterprise. And at the end, the head of state of Audia even tells Picard um, that well, Picard asks, "Would you, if you allow Starfleet, will assist you in learning?" technology again or just learning science again to which the uh, radu the head of state he states yes i would we would really much appreciate that in fact we want the help 
And again, just, um, I'm not going to lie, I am projecting a lot. Um, I just didn't like the conclusion of this episode. And I know that this episode came out in 1988, so it's not connected to what's going on right now. But the fact that this episode came out so long ago, I think maybe that shows uh, us, us being society, how much in degradation the humanities, or rather how much the perspective of the humanities has been in decline. Because I do remember growing up during the 90s, a lot of individuals just saying if one wants to make money, it's the STEM field, right? It's a waste of time to go into the humanities. Uh, yet again, I would argue that without the humanities, you can't have a full individual. And of course, without uh, the STEM field as well. I would argue you need both elements in order to have a fully complete individual. Yet, this, yet despite that, um, we're just seeming to be living in a time where it's we again being society, it's best to put down the humanities and uplift STEM field. And I do think that's awesome, right? Especially for groups of people who have not been allowed to engage and interact with the um, STEM uh, in general. Um, but... I don't want to sound nerdy, but too much science. There's so many stories that tells us the uh, the cautionary tales about that. A right? more literary example, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And then a more fun example, um, Full Metal Alchemist, the manga and the anime Brotherhood with Father's character, uh, who was seeking absolute knowledge, who I would argue was very much a STEM individual um, and not a humanities individual. In fact, I would argue that... Uh, Edward's dad, uh, I forget, it's been a while since I've seen it, but the dad, although he was very much invested in STEM, he was also very much an individual who recognized the importance of uh, the humanities or uh, making connections, being part of the community. So again, that a great example of being a complete individual, a full uh, a person means keeping in mind literature and science. And also from Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, we have that through Walton's character, who he sees too much humanities and... Uh, and, and um, and Frankenstein, I'm sorry, and the, the creature, and too much STEM, and uh, Victor Frankenstein. I was actually going to say that humanity is much more represented with Henry Clarell's character, but he's not really a major character by the end of the novel, so I said there's a slight pause. But I also argue that the creature represents humanities. Yet despite this, Walton, I would argue at the end of the novel, uh, he's going to have elements of both those characters, the creature and Victor Frankenstein. And, um, and yeah, so I, I'm not going to lie, I just finished that episode um, about... 45 minutes ago or so and it just had me thinking a lot and um I do I really appreciated the episode I think it started off really fun and I was in, I was really invested in what was going to be told in terms of the story um my original thoughts about that was going to occur was a philosophical discussion of some sort about the importance of arts in relation to uh science um but unfortunately that's not really what we got and what we got instead was more the the detriments of foregoing science and focusing too much on the arts and um, I'm hopeful that um, I don't think that was the intent of that episode to to quote unquote um, uh, uh, bring down um, the humanity excuse me <laughs> I keep saying because oh, I was going to use a, a street term instead but I decided not to so I think of another word uh, but again I don't think that was the show's intent but that is a conclusion that I personally as a viewer that I came away from with it and, um, and yeah, so I just wanted to discuss that and have that out there in the quote unquote open, the open being my, my, this video and my channel. <laughs> um, but if anyone has any uh, thoughts about that, please feel free to share it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And again, I do acknowledge that I'm probably, I'm a little bit too personally invested in this. Um, one could probably tell that I do enjoy literature. Uh, when I'm, I'm not a, um, a sticker when it comes to literature too. When I, when I say literature, I do include, um, novels, poems, plays, but also, comics, manga, TV shows, movies, right? It all stems from the written word. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not a stick when it comes to that phrase, literature. And what I love about it so much is, again, the fact that even if one is not really invested in the humanities, but we do have novels where we could see where the stem is the focal point or the main um, theme of the novel. And we, get, we being readers, we're able to see what occurs when uh, individuals focus too much on one aspect, or maybe they don't focus enough, they don't have enough um, confidence in what they're doing or enough dedication and what occurs from that, right? And obviously we also get to see that in the STEM field as well, like through lab reports, those uh, the, the experiments, those results that come from the experiments, the individuals, the scientists, the researchers, they're able to put together that information 
and uh, one is able to review that information to come up with conclusions, right? But the cool thing about that word researcher is that oftentimes I believe we being society believes it's just, when they think of researchers, they think of just scientists, but researchers actually includes um, non-STEM fields as well, right? Like sociologists, philosophers, those are the historians, um, I'm trying to think of other uh, the fields. I, I know I said those already besides for historians, but hopefully that makes sense. Um, and yeah, at this point, I think I'm just a little bit rambling a bit, but hopefully my point came across what I want to discuss in this video. And just my conclusion would just be if one is a little bit more invested in STEM or humanities, um, don't knock the other one out. Right? I know as an individual, I do like the humanities more, but I also do acknowledge the importance and the necessity of the STEM field of science, of math, and technology. But then when it comes to individuals who are STEM uh, focused, again, don't knock the humanities because again, hopefully those individuals see the importance of empathy, of thinking critically, of imagination. Uh, those ideas stems from the humanities and the idea of being able to put it into uh, application, or rather not the idea, the, uh, the act of putting those ideas into application that stems from the STEM field. So we're able to combine those two ideas together. Imagine how much more could get done within our society, how much more could get done at the individual basis, because we'll be more complete as individuals. We'll see that there's an issue, we'll do the research to come up with solutions, and then we'll self-reflect and decide what's the best solution for the individual. The individual, of course, being ourselves, right? Um, but yeah, that, again, I'm not gonna lie, this was a uh, emotional video. <laughs> I didn't make it because I was just thinking a little bit too much about the message. Well, rather, I was, thinking, I was overthinking the message of the episode. And um, But with that being said, any Star Trek fans that might be here, I'm not knocking the show. The fact that the show, this episode, was able to make me continue thinking about not just the episode, but also elements beyond the episode, I think that's really much a testament to the uh, storytelling and writing of Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm not just going to say Star Trek because <laughs> it's quite literally my first um, uh, forego into a classic Star Trek. Again, I've only seen J.J. Uh, 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 Abrams' Star Trek, so uh, who knows? Maybe all the Star Trek is like this. But what I can say for sure is at the very least, Star Trek The Next Generation, it does make the viewer think. And that's something I could really appreciate. Uh, thank you so much for listening. I do uh, appreciate that. Uh, please do let me know what's your thoughts and your opinions about the whole STEM versus humanities. Are you more inclined towards one or the other? Do you believe that maybe I'm wrong? Maybe STEM field is indeed much more better than humanities. Maybe the humanities field is stronger than the, st the STEM field, right? Uh, maybe you are one of those individuals that's more on one over the other side. Uh, please do let me know your perspective. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day and take care.